I'll try not to be a smart aleck. I'm not sure that I'll succeed. So I was 90 years old on February 12th. I've just always been healthy. I've always felt good. I'm mobile, I'm still driving. I'm still able to teach two of the classes that I was teaching. I play softball. Being 90, of course, I'm the oldest one there. I was born with pretty good genes, I guess. Well, the Welderly are a very uh, interesting group. Everybody wants to be in the Welderly uh, cohort because as we've learned, these, they're not very common. The Welderly are people that have lived over 85 years of age and remained healthy and um, don't have any major chronic illnesses. They have um, pretty much, they're not taking many medications. Well, I've never had an operation except this one little finger. The goal of this study is to determine what's special about these individuals in terms of their genetics. And if we can discover what these genetic components are that protect them from disease, then maybe we can use that information to prevent disease in the average uh, individual. Well, what we did was whole genome sequencing. So there haven't been that many studies that use whole genome sequencing um, in two different cohorts. So we did whole genome sequencing of the Welderly, and we compared that to a, a, a group of people at the ANOVA Health System who were not necessarily matched for age and certainly not for uh, Welderly status, but had the same platform of sequencing. So that gave us the ability to compare several hundred in each group to see what were the differences in the genome variants that would potentially account for this welderly status. The sequencing is becoming more and more popular these days, especially the whole genome sequencing, but the challenge and uh, sometimes even the bottleneck in the whole genome sequencing now is becoming the data analysis, the bioinformatics part. So we used the existing algorithms, um, existing data structures and databases, and of course we developed new algorithms that um, uh, in the end helped us come to a conclusion. One variant, this APOE variant that causes uh, or predisposes individuals to Alzheimer's disease, we saw a difference between the elderly and the general population where the elderly have a lower risk for uh, Alzheimer's disease. And the other thing that was really interesting and not at all anticipated is that there were common and rare variants of cognitive decline protection. The health of the brain, uh, maybe via behaviors or, or just generally in, in terms of cognitive health, is a very important component of uh, living to an advanced age. Yes, we read and enjoy. I think I've always been active, very active, belong to lots of clubs. There's another really big part of this story. To have a reference genome of people who have had this extreme health span to over age 80, 90, and beyond. This is a good reference genome for people studying late onset diseases. We're not immediately gonna be able to translate these findings into better health for the general population, but in the long-term view, you might consider that if we can identify these variants that uh, cause healthy aging, then maybe that can add to the body of knowledge which will eventually let all of us uh, live to an advanced age and be healthy. Well, this was the longest study I've ever been involved with in my career. It took over eight years. It was almost like looking for the needle in the haystack, and I really enjoyed that. Well, I hope that by studying everybody's blood and their DNA, they will find some way to improve other people's problems. When I turned 90, they said, well, let's have a big party. And I said, oh, you better wait until I'm 100. I'm having a ball. So when I get to be 100, we're going to have a party. <laughs>